Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are. I'm Fidel Agumia. I'm a clinical oncologist from Rwanda Military Hospital. Um, I'm glad to be part of this great conference uh, based on ASCO Africa. And today, my topic is going to be on choosing wisely Africa. I'm sure most of you uh, that have been part of ASCO have heard of the campaign Choosing Wisely. It's a campaign that started in the US and the initiative aims were to optimize the safety and uh, the efficiency of healthcare by encouraging the use of evidence-based application, uh, medical uh, investigation and also interventions. And also to identify low value and unnecessary or harmful cancer services that are frequently used in different uh, national healthcare systems. Uh, so different uh, groups, uh, and here the ASCO, uh, the ASH, have published their Choosing Wisely campaign, uh, one in 2013 and the other in 2014. And this uh, started uh, the movement for other countries and regions also published their own uh, Choosing Wisely uh, campaigns. And here in 2015, there was Choosing Wisely uh, Canada and Choosing Wisely India was published in 2019 by our colleague, uh, Pramishan and his colleague. And this is what really inspired us uh, to also do Choosing Wisely Africa. Uh, basically because we share similar uh, uh, background or even the resources uh, with India. So we said if India can do it, uh, we can do it because we have similar uh, resources. And I think we, if you, uh, if you look at our list, you find that most of the list, I mean, the practices that were published for choosing wisely India are mostly similar to what we published, but of course with the context in mind. <coughs> so this is, uh, you know, uh, this physician driven initiative is basically designed to facilitate the conversation between the patient and the, and the physicians and as well as other healthcare delivery organization. And the ultimate goal is to uh, see an improved overall quality of care for our cancer patients. So choosing wisely, uh, we had uh, uh, questions for ourselves and uh, what we are really uh, concerned about were whether Choosing wisely is really relevant to our settings, uh, which we answered yes, because uh, actually it's where it matters. And that's why I titled my topic today, Choosing Wisely Africa, where it matters. And uh, because we have uh, raw resources and hence we need to use these resources wisely, but not only to look at the, you know, the cost itself, but also the, the, the the quality of care we give to our patients, uh, we will see that some of these results, I mean, the practices that we, we suggest or recommend to not practice in our countries is really to both improve the quality of care for our patients, but also to, uh, to look at the cost. Uh, are we really giving cost-effective uh, uh, drugs or uh, interventions? And uh, uh, what is the value of care? Uh, which is something that is, you know, these days is being talked about and rightly so. Are we, uh, is the cost uh, and the quality that is given, uh, uh, do they go hand in hand and do they benefit our patient or you just uh, prescribing drugs that are costly for, uh, you know, minimum benefit? Um, or are you giving uh, drugs that are, causing a lot of toxicities when there were alternatives, uh, so on and so on. So we found out that the risk that we're going to produce is really relevant. And next was about how are we going to generate this list and uh, are we going to be updating this on annual basis every five years or not? And this is what is going to be answered in this talk. So, uh, <clears throat> I mean, without going into, uh, uh, much details, we know that the cancer burden is, is, is rapidly increasing, not only in Africa, but worldwide. But particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, we are facing uh, enormous uh, uh, challenges because of uh, lack of resources, uh, 
uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, shared across the region. Uh, the governments are not putting a lot of uh, efforts to provide financial support for cancer care, but not only cancer care in general, if you look at uh, the, the, the money that is uh, uh, spent for healthcare in Africa is really minimal, uh, despite several uh, uh, meetings, uh, governmental meetings that have, you know, given uh, promises that there's going to be an increase for the national budget dedicated to healthcare. Uh, for that, we think that we need to use uh, the retail resources that we have uh, wisely and prudently, uh, especially uh, in our settings. So choosing wisely Africa or followed kind of mostly uh, the similar path that other choosing wisely campaign did. We bought uh, some of the methodology that they use. So we we created a project lead team that was made up of Africans and of course some advisors that were participants of Choosing Wisely Canada and India, and then created a task force that was representative of uh, people from different countries in Sub-Saharan region, uh, including different disciplines uh, from surgery, medical oncology, radiation oncology. We had public and private sectors included, but also patient advocacy groups were also represented. So we had a very long list of practices that were uh, published in other Choosing Wisely campaigns, uh, but uh, even those that were not published, we included them so that we can see whether for them they are, you know, uh, if they are, can be considered given our context in, in Sub-Saharan Africa region. And then uh, we, the task force team was tasked, of course, to look at this large uh, or the long list to uh, minimize it to a shorter uh, list. So we used a modified Gauti consensus process uh, where the long list was uh, shortened to a short list of 10 practices that were finally uh, published. Uh, we had nine countries representing the regions. We chose uh, nine countries based on, of course, the location, but also the language spoken and the diversity of practices that we find in these countries uh, uh, ranging from public to uh, private practices. And uh, for uh, uh, practices to be included as uh, those that should be uh, avoided, uh, we, we looked at evidence of low value or whether the practices were, was considered harmful, the high frequency of use on the continent or the sub-Saharan region. Of course, we uh, also, uh, looked at the cost of, of, of the cost of care, clarity on the wording and the relevance of the on the African context and the feasibility of future measurements uh, uh, was also considered. And for a practice to be included uh, for a practice to be included uh, on, on, on the list, uh, the voting uh, the consensus had to be uh, 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 60 and above. Uh, for those of the members. The voting and discussion took place electronically and the by teleconferences. So we published our list, and you can find this uh, on the website of uh, Journal of Global Oncology. And this is our title, Choosing Wisely Africa, the 10 low value or harmful practice that should be avoided in the cancer care. Um, and uh, probably I do not get time to go through all the practices, but I'll probably pick one and uh, 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 expand on that. And uh, if I go by uh, this second one, do not decide treatment of potential curable cancers without inputs from a multidisciplinary oncology team. This is very crucial, and I think in high-income countries, you cannot treat a patient without inputs from uh, different uh, uh, disciplines. And we think, uh, despite the lack of expertise in, uh, in sub-Saharan region, the need for multidisciplinary oncology team is paramount. And hence, we suggest in this, if you read the whole article, you find that on this topic, we suggest that even where uh, there's one uh, expert, or let's say an oncologist or a surgeon, it's very important that uh, they seek guidance from other disciplines, even if those are not in the same hospital or even in the same country. So we think that no one should treat cancer in, in a silo or alone. 
So we published 10 of them. And uh, if you read the whole uh, article, you'll find uh, you know, very, this very interesting. Uh, uh, most of these practices uh, were treatment related. One was uh, on uh, 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 patient monitoring post-treatment surveillance and another was on screening and uh, prevention, but most of others, uh, eight were basically uh, treatment related. So going forward, we are going to look at how to implement uh, choosing wisely uh, recommendation across the sun region. Uh, I was uh, lucky to be, uh, to get the ASCO grant, uh, LIFE grant, the long fellowship uh, fellowship grant by us for 2020, and uh, I'll be using this fellowship to uh, see how this can be implemented across the sub region and also measure its success. And of course, going forward, we're going to be updating this list uh, uh, as we go forward. Thank you so much.